How dear to my heart are the scenes of my childhood when fond recollection presents them to view, the orchard, the meadow, the deep tangled wildwood, and every young spot that my infancy knew. The glistening pond and the mill that's beside it, the bridge and the rock where the cataract fell, the cot of my father and the dairy house nigh it, and the old oaken bucket, the ironclad bucket, the old oaken bucket that hung in the well. Welcome to ESPN's College Football. You're watching the Big Ten on ESPN, and today from Ross Aid Stadium in West Lafayette, it's the Indiana Hoosiers taking on the Purdue Boilermakers. And we are playing for the old oaken bucket, and T. Gray Scales is given the honor of being the guardian of today's prize. This trophy was first awarded all the way back in 1925. Purdue leads the overall series in bucket games, and Purdue leads the overall series as well, 72, 41, and 6. Indiana has won the last four. Today is the first meeting where both teams need to win to become bowl eligible. Good afternoon, everybody. Mike Patrick, Tommy Tuberville, Paul Carcaterra will join us shortly. It is great to have you with us a couple of days after Thanksgiving. You coach in a lot of these rivalry games. The fact that a bowl is on the line makes it even bigger. Well, it's a nationwide family feud, Mike. That's what these these rivalries are about. They're all over the country, and we've got a great one here today. And as for bowls, in January, every year when you start your winter workouts, this is one of your main objectives is have an opportunity to spend two weeks with your players and your coaches, especially your seniors, the last game. Today, a bowl game is on the line. Indiana has won the toss. They have deferred. There are the coaches, Jeff Brom and Tom Allen, first and second year coaches, respectively. Both come in at five and six. Two passing offenses today, Mike, We're, and that's unusual for the Big Ten. Just talking to these coaches, they're both going to air it out. Running game has not been there. They love to throw the ball. A lot of short passes. The return game has not been very dynamic for the Boilermakers. DJ Knox, their best return man, 18 yards average on the season. And they will take it at the 25 yard line. Elijah Sindelar is Purdue's starting quarterbacks. Only one of two FBS starters at quarterback, majoring in engineering. He was Mr. Football for the state of Kentucky in 2014. And Sindelar completing over 56% of his passes with 12 touchdowns and six interceptions on the year. They love the throw. Sindelar airs it out down the sideline, incomplete, intended for Mahungu down the sideline. Let's take a look at the impact players when Purdue has the ball. The Boilers' lead receiver is Anthony Mahungu, coming off his best game ever, 7 for 135 in the upset of Iowa. And T. Gray Scales, who you saw delivering the trophy, has been a four-year tackling machine, the first All-American linebacker in three decades for the Hoosiers. This pass will pick up about eight yards to Jackson Anthrop, making his 40th catch of the year and Crawford was there one of the safeties in coverage he was the MVP of the old Oaken bucket game a year ago two interceptions and a fumble recovery in that game Sindelar's going to throw a lot of short high percentage passes they Mike a lot to the tight end to the back on the inside route I said the more he throws the better rhythm he gets and this time he'll hand it off to Markel Jones and Jones, who we may see as a Wildcat quarterback a little bit today, picks up the first down. Running back by committee. They haven't had a big running, running game this year because they can't find that standout running back. And they're missing uh, the biggest running back in captivity today, Richie Worship, who's 260 pounds, but he's out with a knee injury. Little shovel pass off the left side for 
good yardage and again it's Markel Jones who beat them to the perimeter good block by Swingler the former walk on left tackle Chris Covington their weak side linebacker number four he's going to, have to make a lot of plays either in the passing game and running against the run because they're going to run to his side most of the time Jones again straight up the middle gang tackled and pushed back T Gray scales led the charge Offensive plays will be called from the sideline very quickly. They get lined up quickly. They line up. They get their play from the sideline, and then they're, they're going to go. They're going to try to get a lot of plays in today. Single R will hand it off again to Jones. It's really an interesting offense they run, Coach, because they have run 27 trick plays this year. And what's the reason you run so many trick plays? Well, you're trying to make some offense. Usually, if you've got a good offense, you don't run that many trick plays. But this offense is predicated on deception in the passing game, and a lot of these trick plays are off passes. DJ Knox checks in, and this pass out to Mahungu. Very well covered by Richard Fant who has 53 pass breakups in his career. That's more than anybody else in the nation who's currently playing at the FBS level. Fant is their best cover corner. He just gets between the quarterback and the receiver. Looked like the receiver cut his route off a little bit short or ran it a little bit long. The quarterback was off target. Shopper comes in to punt, averaging 40 and a half yards a kick. And Timmy in his deep. They lost Jason Harris, one of the best kick returners in the country as that ball bounces out of bounds inside the 18 yard line only a 29 yard kick the Hoosiers offense led by Richard Lego who was a redshirt freshman at Oklahoma State in 2013 then transferred to Cisco Community College in Texas has come to Indiana and started 21 games over the last two years Indiana's got the advantage of the first quarter. They've got about a 15, 18 mile an hour win at their back, so the passing game's going to be prevalent. They're like Purdue, though. They do not have a strong running game. Their running game short is the short passing game to inside receivers. Morgan Ellison is the running back. They fake it to him, and Lego leads forward and has it picked up. Intercepted by Garrett Hudson, the middle linebacker. For the injured Jawan Bentley, a return of 21 yards and a poor throw by Lego. That's a product of having the play called and ran all week, the first play of the game. This is what we're going to run, and the quarterback was going to throw this ball in the middle of the field. If you watch here, 16, Hudson reads him all the way. All the way, makes a good interception. You know, Luke Tenem Teneman has got to make sure he keeps bringing that route across the field. He cut it off a little short. That is the ninth interception by this Purdue defense, and they set up shop at the five. Oh, quick end around for an easy touchdown. Anthrop unchallenged and goes five yards for the score. That was a quick, quick and easy touchdown because it was deception. Just a quick handoff. The linebackers never even saw the receiver in motion. You could tell Purdue that was going to be their first play, and they've run it all week inside the red zone, inside the 10-yard line. Easy play, easy touchdown for Purdue. They might decide to run that again, Tommy. No, I'm sure they'll run it several <laughs> times. What a great start for the Boilers. Spencer Evans is on to try the point after. He has not missed this year and still has it. Great interception by the backup middle linebacker, Garrett Hudson. And the touchdown off of it with no problem. You never want to miss the opportunity to play your biggest rivalry. Unfortunately for Purdue, Jawan Bentley is out. He is their best player. He's their middle linebacker. Garrett Hudson was Johnny on the spot, but was called earlier than anticipated. 
Jawan Bentley had an injured ankle all, all week. He attempted to practice throughout the week, even as early as this morning at the facility. He tried to give it a go, but not lucky enough to play in this huge game. Bentley is the only three-time captain in Purdue history and is a tackling machine, Mike. And what a shame for him. That kid has been a great player his entire career. Good return, but there's a flag down. Now let's take a look at this historic rivalry matchup brought to you by Wendy's. The 93rd Old Oaken Bucket Game. Purdue leading the series 58-31-3 in bucket games. Indiana's won its last four. But this is the first time teams are playing for bowl eligibility in this game. The winner has a chance to go to a bowl game. The loser goes home. Indiana takes over at its own 20. They have been dominated so far by the Purdue defense. Morgan Ellison, nothing. Falls forward for about a yard and a half. Ellison, a true freshman, 225 pounds. These two offensive lines are going to get overwhelmed today because the strength of both teams is the defensive line. And so this is going to be a defensive line oriented game. The three defenders bunched to the right, only two guys out there on them, and now one of the safeties creeps over. Sindelar in trouble. Did he get rid of it? It looked like he may have thrown it. Now they have not blown the whistle, and the ruling pending a replay is going to be a touchdown for T.J. McCollum. The referees aren't going to blow that whistle. They're going to let it play out. Now they'll re replay this and check to see if it was a forward pass. That's a good job by the officials not blowing it sure dead. Sure is. Not blowing it dead. That's a great job. Because replay can get it right now. Lego is going to run for his life. As we talked earlier, they can't block these two defensive tackles. They're going to dominate, and he tries to get the ball out. It could be a, it could be a forward pass, but we'll have to wait and see what the instant replay guy says. Antoine Miles drilled him at the end. He's number 11. After further review, it was not a fumble. It was an incomplete pass. As a result, it'll be third down and eight, 22-yard line. Now you can see how they can make that call. Right, that, that was a good call. He was trying to throw the ball forward. The ball wasn't knocked out of his hands by the, by the defensive tackle uh, trying to make the play. A good play by Lego, but he's got to be careful. That's awful close to putting him down 14 points. And the first touchdown was set up by an interception. So this defense is really doing the job. Third and eight. Very conservative play call there as they'll run for it, and Ellison didn't have a chance. It'll be fourth and seven, and this Purdue defense, which is ranked 35th in the country in total defense, has done a brilliant job at preventing other teams from scoring this year. The most improved scoring defense in the entire country. That was Jacob Thinneman, number 41. He is their team leader. On, he's their quarterback on defense. That's what the coaches call him. They get him lined up in the right spot. He knows where everybody's supposed to be. He made a big play there on third down. Anthrop is the deep man. Let's it bounce, takes it inside the 30 and is drilled. Mental mistake. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 87 on the kicking team. 15 yards from the end of the kick. First down. Timeout. He may have assumed because the ball hit the ground, it wasn't going to be a fair catch anymore. Purdue, good field position here, leading 7-0. And there's that quick play, and the ball is fumbled, picked up by Scales. Break for Indiana. Burgess just couldn't hold the ball. I don't think anybody hit him. I think it no. just popped out of his hand. Another quick sweep. He had a little running room up the middle, and he got his feet tangled up. And as you see here, just a quick handoff. He's got a lead blocker. He makes the turn. He trips over his own guys. What happened? Trips over him and loses the ball. Huge break for Indiana. They had to have something positive happen because they've got to win this quarter and they're getting ready to go against the win after this drive. 
Can they take advantage? Cole Guest, number 20, checks in at running back. Ellison was the starter. Guest off the left side. Fighting for extra yards, gets to the 34. Gain of seven, Jacob Thieneman. The strong safety, the number three tackler on this ball club, made the stop. They're going to start going fast now. They're going NASCAR, going fast, try to get them lined up wrong. Timian, who's very good on option routes, is an inside receiver. He'll be about a yard shy of a first down. Fourth in the nation in their speed offense. Guest. Tell you what, you're not going to make a living running against Purdue. No, it's, you know, you've got the wind behind you here. It's going to be fourth and about a yard. They've got to get some points on the board. I'd probably try to kick it here as long as I got the wind behind me. Although he might go for it. And Oaks has a very strong leg. But they're not showing the field goal unit at all. With this defensive front, I'd, I, you've got to at least try to throw the ball. I don't think they can get it running. They've got an eight-man front. Maybe a quick sweep. Maybe throw the tight end. And now they may just be trying to draw them offside. Yeah. No, they'll run the play. Lego. Deep out, caught at the five. Wide open, semi Cobbs because the defender never turned around. Navon Mosley never saw the ball. Never saw the ball. He had his hands on close to pass interference. Semi Cobbs just was going out, out muscling for the ball. Ellison checks back in at tailback. And Ellison will get the carry, but doesn't reach the goal line. No movement, just no movement at all on the defensive line. They're going to go quick here to try to get an easy, easy score, but their receivers are on the wrong side, probably going to the field here. Speaking of easy, it was easy. Chuku who made that last tackle. This is to the goal line, but not across it. Just no movement. You can see right here the defensive line is up the field. And he he's about the one foot line. Easy Chuku again. Third and goal. Tough to find a play call that works here. You're gonna look left again. Throw to the end zone. Touchdown. Simi Cobbs that time did not continue in the end zone, but broke back toward the corner and a perfect throw by Lego. He just changed his route. You know, been running the fade route in the end zone. This time he just runs a stop route, comes back to the pylon. They call that a pylon throw and a very good throw right there by Lego. And once Cobbs gets position with his size, pretty tough to shut him down. Point after by Oaks, the Lou Groza semifinalist ties it at seven. Again, a pylon route. Tries to get the outside, thinks he's going to run a go route. Comes back to pylon. Good throw by Lego. Purdue's playing very aggressive, and if they continue to do that, Indiana's going to have a tough time scoring very many points today. They are playing very aggressive up front with their defensive line. Knox and Anthrop are deep. And that kick. Bound. Sindelar leads out the Purdue offense. And Sindelar throws a strike to a wide open Mahungu. I mean, there was nobody but him in the area. One on one pass coverage. Another back shoulder throw. He sees it's a defensive back here. Is overplaying him. Overplaying the go route. He just throws the back shoulder. Good communication from the wide receiver quarterback. Andre Brown just kept going and ended up with no coverage at all. Gregory Phillips makes this grab. Another RPO run pass option. The quarterback can hand it off or throw it. They didn't have enough people out on the screen to cover Gregory Phillips. They're going to move down the field if they don't get out of zone coverage. They got to play a little bit of man. They're playing mostly zone right now. Now here they're going to man. 
Sindelar an equal opportunity pass. Flea flicker. Sindelar with time throws for the end zone out of bounds. He has him open. He just throws the ball out of bounds. You hear time after time when you throw go routes. Give the receiver a chance. Don't throw it out of bounds. Only thing you can do to keep from interception is throw it over his head, but do not throw the ball out of bounds. He had good position on the defensive back. Richard Fant was beaten, but didn't have to worry about it. The 28th time they have tried a trick play under first year head coach Jeff Braun. Thank you, Clark Sindelar chased out of the pocket, throws incomplete. And they really didn't know what to make of this young man because he was so even keel. He was not a very vocal leader, but uh, they found out he was a pretty good quarterback. There they found out, too, that he can't throw the ball on the run. Both of these kids are pocket passers, and both defenses want to make the quarterbacks to get out of the pocket. Timian drops back to his five to wait shoppers punt. High end over end into the wind. Forces a fair catch inside the 10. Good kick by Shopper. Only 30 yards, but perfectly positioned. Indiana starts deep in its own territory and gains about a yard on the run. Hunter Littlejohn, the center, number 68 for Indiana, is having a day's work with Eddie Wilson, number seven, blocking. He cannot block him. Really impressed with this Purdue defense so far, especially the front four. They have been incredibly stout. And if you can't run the ball, it's pretty tough. It really is. And they're not, they're playing some zone, some man, just a four-man front, no, no pressure. And they're doing it without their star middle linebacker, Jawan Bentley. You can do a lot of things, Mike, with seven, eight seniors on defense because they've experienced, they can play all kind of deep offense, defenses against different offenses. Guest breaks off the left side. Best run of the day and a first down out to the 21. And Tommy, when you have seniors, that's the opportunity for teams that are normally in the bottom half of the league to really shine because, as you said, you can do so many things. Yeah, you can dictate a game with defense. You can't really dictate a game with offense because you're going to make a lot of mistakes, but defense can really dictate how the, the flow of a game. Said by an exceptional defensive coordinator, Guest will get a couple of yards. Mike DeBoard, the offensive coordinator from Indiana, said, we're going to run a lot of plays. We're going to try to get them in different defenses, but in Purdue just lining up in base defense and playing zone. They're not getting them, making them create any problems. They come with a three man rush here, get no pressure. Turns out they don't need it. Gain of a couple out to the 25. They need to make the 31 for a first down. Looks like they're going to run the quarter out here. And they do. The end of the first quarter for West Lafayette, Indiana. It is 7-7, the rivalry game for the old Oaken Bucket. Welcome back to ESPN's Jiffy Loop Rivalry Series, and this is the Legends Race. Not terribly competitive, and Woodson wins at the end. If it was the real Rod Woodson, he'd have won by 50 <laughs> yards. That was such a bizarre sequence where they canceled football and then brought it back after all their players left. And this ball is, is thrown deep and incomplete, intended for Timian, but Oconye was right there. Good coverage by Oconye. Timian doesn't have that much speed. He can't outrun him. They need to use him more than the inside receiver on post routes. But they've tried to get him deep, just can't get him open. He's got a lot of quickness, but not uh, flat out speed. Whitehead comes on to kick, and neither team has uh, really benefited from the win for field position so yeah. far. They might, they might benefit here. This is into a 15, 18 mile an hour win. See what kind of punt we get from the Australian. 
Whitehead. End over end. Anthrop makes the fair catch to 39. Only 31 yards into that win. Let's go to Carr. You know, gentlemen, we have the luxury of traveling across the country and seeing these magnificent facilities. Well, Purdue has up the ante in the Big Ten. This facility is off the charts. Sixty-five million dollars they invested in a football-only facility. It's 110,000 square feet. And the weight room, which I spent some time in yesterday, as we see the facility on the other side of the south end zone, the weight room, 18,000 square feet, full electronic devices in terms of tracking these athletes. It's magnificent. Single R throws underneath, complete to Isaac Zyko. And Paul, the one thing that uh, struck me, uh, the athletic director, Mike Bobinski, came here. He was the one who hired Jeff Brom. He said, I didn't come here not to be competitive. And he promised them new facilities. He delivered on the facilities. And coach, you know better than anybody, if you don't have all the bells and whistles, players aren't gonna come. No, they're really not. And it's, you know, it's a, it's a recruiting war now. It's not just a battle. Everybody's got to have the same things. And again, Purdue has been behind, and they're catching up very quickly. I, I went through their facilities yesterday, and they're very, very nice. And they're really going to help their recruiting. Now, recruit facilities don't do it. You winning games actually helps you recruit, but this is really going to help them recruit better players. Second and ten. That one is wide of Anthrop. And they have done a tremendous job at getting people in the stands. And the percentage increase for the crowds this year set records. 12,000, almost 12,600 over last year. That's the biggest increase in the FBS. And this is a huge crowd today in Ross Aid Stadium, which holds a little over 57,000. There's very few empty seats. Third and 10. Pressure coming. The out is complete, but that's going to be a couple of yards shy of a first down. Crawford made the tackle on Anthrop. Well, you've got the wind at your back. What do you do, Tommy? Well, I'd punt the ball. I'd, I'd put them down in inside the 10 yard line. You got an opportunity to make them have one more drive here and get the ball back possibly around the same position if you can go three and out with with your defense after this punt. So shopper will come on. They'll try to kill it inside the 10. Got to be careful with the wind at his back. And Timmy stands with six. It's a fake. And Shopper has a man wide open, throws it down the middle, first down and more for Purdue. A tremendous play, and the punter throws a perfect strike to Gregory Phillips. Great call. Tony Levine, special teams coach, former head coach at Houston just a few years ago, coached in special teams and the pros. Deception. That was a perfect place to run it, but they ran it against safe defense, men, meaning that they actually thought that they might run a trick play here, might run a fake, and they still executed it. Heck of a play. They make it call at the right time. And Joe Shopper, the junior kicker, makes a perfect throw. That's a lot of pressure on a kicker, Tom. It really is. You know, you might throw two balls in your lifetime in a college football <laughs> game. And that was in a rivalry game and huge play. Yeah, chance, chance to go to a ball game. And you put it in the hands of the punter. And the crowd wants a flag and they get it. Richard Fant against Mahungu. Best interference. Defense number 16. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Here you see it from the outside. Richard Font plays outside leverage. He lets him run the post and just grabs him. He knew it was going to be a touchdown, so he took the penalty and probably a good call from him. He's their best cover guy against their most dangerous receiver, Mahungu, coming off a brilliant performance in the upset of Iowa a week ago. First and goal. A little delay. 
nothing doing. And look at the effort to get two yards out of absolutely nothing for DJ Knox. T. Gray sells. Yeah, I'm telling T. Gray sells just read it all the way. Just a kind of a delayed draw zone play, and T. Gray sells was not not taking the bait of dropping back and playing pass. Second and goal now from the four. Knox seven yards deep. Speed sweep. Touchdown. Antra. That's the second time they've run that play. This time he cut it inside and was unmolested to the end zone. They've seen something on tape. They knew this play was going to work, and it's worked twice. Well, what you do is you run it to the left side on your first touchdown. This side, time they just ran it to the right side. Same play. As you said, he just cut up inside. There was nobody after they. What happened is they just outran the linebackers. They were in man coverage. That's who he had covering. Anthrop has never had a rushing touchdown. He's had two today. Remember, it was set up by this play. Shopper. To tell everybody he is one for one throwing the football, and Anthrop says they ought to give it to me more often. Now Purdue breaks out the trickery. He's taking a 14-7 lead over Indiana. It's one thing to be tricky, it's another thing to make it work. Indiana with 442 to work with before halftime. Guest goes out in the flat. They look for him and complete it to Guest. He'll only get about a yard because Marcus Bailey had it covered perfectly. Very impressed with the tackling of both defenses today in open field. They're, they're chances for some big plays. These guys are making one-on-one -on -one tackles. Marcus Bailey, they say he's the best athlete on defense and plays well in space. Guest. Well, it's tough to get anything against this front seven for Purdue. They have been tough all year long. They're coming off a their biggest win. They knocked off Iowa last year, 24-15 at Iowa. And beat them pretty handedly, too. Third and seven. They go under pressure, throws underneath. There's some tackling that you were talking about. Ryan Watercutter was chopped down by Dewan Hunt. These guys anticipate so well. Watercutter does not see him coming, and that's cool. I tell you what, that's kind of a dangerous play by Hunt. He hits him low, but you'd rather go that route than play high because you don't need the you don't need head helmet to helmet contact. That was a good tackle. Anthrop waits back inside his 30. Whitehead, end over end. Fair catch made at the 28 yard line. They'll try to run for it and they'll get it. Markel Jones. Biggest hole of the day picks up 17 to midfield. Jones has got good vision right here. The defensive tackle just runs up the field. They didn't even have to block him. That was a hole in there a mile wide. They thought pass then. Bubble screen. Not going anywhere to Anthrop. They do better when they hand it to him. Chris Covington made the stop. Another good inside linebacker. He and Scales. I think combined, these are the best two defenses I have ever seen with Purdue and Indiana. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously way above what they played in the past. Indiana's playing just as well as uh, Purdue. Touchdown. 
touchdown for Mahungu. 49 yards. Didn't look like they were going to be able to complete it because Fant was right there. He's their best cover guy. But that ball just kept going, perhaps aided by the fact that they were throwing it with the wind. Looked like backyard football. Yes, it just did. Drop back and throw the fade route. Just outran him and out jumped him. So Purdue has used trickery and then they go for the bomb and complete it. Let's take a look at the route. Man coverage on the outside. Mahungo just gives him a move at the line of scrimmage and out outruns. Again, Fent is the number one corner that they have. Just alley-oop pass, throw it up, out jump him, catch it. Back shoulder pass or a jump pass, either one works against shorter defensive backs one on one. And Mahungu got away with a very subtle push at the end and perfectly timed, something they're not going to call, but it was very effective in getting Fan off his coverage. Only 53 seconds to go in the half. Wap Fillier is deep. So named because his father said he grew up, all he wanted to eat were Whoppers. So they started calling him Wop and it stuck. With cheese. With cheese. <laughs> Lego throws underneath incomplete, intended for semi Cobbs. Lego's just having a tough time in the pocket because he's seeing both Eddie Wilson, Lorenzo Neal, and Jalen Robinson, defensive tackle, just all at his legs. Right as soon as he gets a snap out of shotgun, just not much protection on the inside. 10 out of 20 for a measly 63 yards in the first half. Lego unloads this one off of Cobb's hand. He was well covered by a Konya at the sideline. Indiana has to be careful here because there's still 43 seconds to go in the half. And they're going into the wind. Here's Simi Cobbs. They hadn't gotten him into the game much. You know, just an outside throw. Oconia, he's got good coverage, but there's not enough speed on the outside. These guys are playing soft with 47 seconds to go in the half. Purdue, all three timeouts left. Here's a draw that's going to get them out of trouble and straight up the middle. The run going for Brookins, and Brookins caught from behind at the 11-yard line. A gain of 64 yards for Brookins, who had only nine carries all season coming in. Well, Purdue was expecting a fastball, and they got a changeup. They got a draw play on a long yardage situation. Brookins hits the line of scrimmage, just really a slow draw the zone play to the outside. He's got good vision, makes a play, but makes somebody miss, and that's what you have to do. Navon Mosley missed a tackle. Hunt catches him from behind, but at least they got a chance to get three or seven points. 32 seconds left and two timeouts to work with for Richard Lego and the Hoosier offense. They've had a tough time in the red zone. Let's see what they're going to pull out of their hat this time. Lay go to the end zone out of bounds. Intended for Timian, but he was covered well by Thieneman, and Lego never gave him a chance. Yeah, well designed play. Timian came from the backfield, ran a wheel route or just a go route to the outside, just ran out of room. Again, don't throw it out of bounds, give him a chance. Purdue shows blitz and backs out of it. Second and ten. Lego throws underneath. That's going to be complete to Brookins. They'll spot it at the four and stop the clock again with 18 seconds left. And that means Indiana's out of timeouts. I know you've been asking coaches that you uh, appreciate their opinions all season long. It seems to be pretty much split. 
Lego incomplete intended for Cobbs. Covered well by Hunt. And now you've got yeah. to send on the field goal unit. Yeah, you got to take three points. They get the ball coming out at halftime, so take three here. Get within two scores. Hunt did a great job right there on the drag route. They tried to pick him out, out outside on the corner, but he did a good job of coming underneath and picking up that drag route. Griffin Oaks has been an exceptional kicker for this club. Griffin Oaks. Guy is money. Purdue with the lead at the half, 21-10. Coming up, Chris Cotter will bring us up to date on all today's games after these commercial messages. And now for today's game track brought to you by Cabela's. It has been sort of an odd game set up by uh, turnovers early. Lego only 69 yard passing but one touchdown. Sindelar hit a touchdown and Anthrop has had his first two rushing touchdowns of his career both on fly sweeps. And that will go out of the end zone so they'll start at the 25. One thing both teams talked about, Tommy, was trying to run the ball. Neither one has really had great success. Though. Really not. It's all about defense on both sides, but 37 run attempts the first half. I didn't think there'd be 37 the whole game. Exactly. And, you know, it's a beautiful day. Wind might be affecting the, the passing game a little bit, but whoever can run the ball the second half successfully is probably going to win this game. But there will be some big plays in the second half. Indiana with the ball to start the second half from the 25. That was not executed very well, and Ellison has no chance, and we go to Paul Carcaterra. You know, Mike, every single Saturday when I roam the sidelines, I talk to coaches when they come back onto the field. When I spoke to Tom Allen. It was evident that this is not an ordinary game. He was super, super intense in regards to what needed to happen in the second half. Third down on both sides of the ball, not acceptable in his mind. And the trick plays from Purdue, he thinks they're going to continue. He said, I discipline, critical. Boy, there is a good throw from Lego, Paul. And Tassir Mack made the catch for 15. That was maybe Lego's best throw of the day. Yeah, it could have been. Well, on the outside, just got it up high. Taser just out jumped the defensive back. It was a, it was a good play by Hunt. He just didn't get there in time. Spotted to the 40, first down. And Ellison has had very little luck against that stout Purdue front seven. The key for Indiana, Mike, on this drive is to run the clock. Try to get some points out of it, but knowing that they've got the win in the fourth quarter, I think that's going to be huge for a team that's probably going to be at least a touchdown behind going in the fourth quarter. That'll give them an advantage. For Ellison, only 15 yards on eight carries. This will be second and six. Pressure coming on Lego, and they got him. He escapes and throws to the sideline, just threw it away. That's pretty close to grounding right it there. It sure was. The it, ball never got anywhere near getting back to the line of scrimmage. I don't think he was yeah. out of the tackle box. Eddie Wilson's going to have two missed tackles. Harry misses him once. Then he misses him again. He gets blocked from behind. He just throws it away. That should have been grounding, yeah. Coach. He it, was in the tackle box. The ball never got close to a receiver, and it never got close to getting back to the line of scrimmage. I'm going to let you call this from third and 25. No, thank you. I'd run a draw, but they're going to throw it underneath, and it's dropped. Intended for Timmy, and he couldn't hold it. Saved by the penalty on Purdue's side. Now they've got to punt into the wind. Should have good field position. See what the Australian punter can do. Tell you what, Lego looks sharp on that series. Hey, he was rifling the football. I think it caused uh, Nick Holt, the defensive coordinator, to blitz a little bit, knowing that he was on, on target two times in a row. White had the more traditional punt this time, and Anthrop with the fair catch. 38-yard kick into the wind, and let's go to Carter. Mike and Tommy, we've been so complimentary in terms of this Purdue defense, but 
Just to recap, they're doing it without their middle linebacker, Juwan Bentley, who went through all the senior day festivities in street clothes. It's an ankle injury. He's one of the all-time greats defensively for Purdue. He's the only three-time captain in school history. And his void, not just in terms of his production on the field, but in regards to his ownership of the sideline in that linebacker huddle is big for Purdue in this second half. Boy, you're right. I admire that kid so much. I mean, he is an, he is an a huge individual, 260 pounds. And you run up inside against him, good luck. And, and fighting off all those injuries. Only three guys, current Power Five conference players, have been three-time captains, including JT Barrett. Sindelar has Markel Jones behind him. Trying to build on a career high ball game. And does. Markel Jones off the left side. He's got a burst. Out to the 35 yard line to the cheers of this Purdue crowd. The left side's been huge for Purdue on the running game. Good movement right there for 75. Shane Evans. Get great downfield blocking. Right there out of Gregory Phillips. It's easy to run the open field like that when you've got good blocking, and the left side's been very good to Purdue this half. Great numbers for Jones 114 yards, 8.8 .8 yards a carry. Jones again. And they found something on that left side, and he's got a first down at the 45 yard line. 60 Eric Swingler and 75 Shane Evans getting good movement. Blocks the linebacker. Good blocking downfield. Again, it's just an outside zone play. They've got to get an inside. They've got to roll their safety back up inside because they got two guys that got a tight end out there tight that's blocking down inside, blocking the linebacker. Blocking of Evans and his teammates up front. Five of the last six runs have gone for 10 yards or more. That'll stop you from passing the ball. Just go ahead and grind on it. Purdue 181 yards rushing. They have certainly exceeded their season average of less than 140 yards. I think both coaches are surprised how their running game's working because the defensive front, really the defensive front seven is very good on both sides. Exactly. Sindelar wants to go back to work. Throws this one up. Good one-on-one -on -one coverage by Fant, who's been beaten before this year or this game, but there is a flag down. The pass was intended from Mahungu on the outside. They trust Pester Fant. Defense. defense number 16. 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Just a matter of time. Mahungu, who going after Fant, you know, they've gone after him four or five times. Really should have been a no call there. Both were playing hands back and forth. I think I'd have kept my my flag in my pocket. The ball was really uncatchable, but uh, the official was right on top of it. Not this time. Jones got back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe a yard. Andre Brown came up from the corner in a hurry. You know, they'd had enough of that outside run. Yeah, got the win now at their back. They need at least three points because the whole fourth quarter, Purdue is going to be into this 15, 20 mile an hour win. Sindelar with a strike inside to his tight end, Cole Herdman. That will be first and goal for the Boilermakers. Play action pass that freezes the linebacker and the tight end. Cole Herdman just runs it as the team route down the middle. Again, it all happened because of play action. The linebacker picking up the running back. I think it's a bullet from Sindelar. Running play will take them to the five. Jones is going to be worn out before this one's over. He is breathing hard. You can tell. You can tell he was sweating all the way up here, and it's pretty chilly outside. He's had a tough third quarter, but made a lot of progress, made a lot of plays, and the passing game is going to work off his success at running the football. 
Like the fly sweep down here, it's worked twice. Might as well. Speaking of second, it's second and goal. They fake the fly sweep and go back the other way, and Indiana was waiting on it. Well, the fakes off of it don't work too well. The initial play itself does. I'd have had to try it one more time just to hand it to them and see if they've adjusted. They made a little bit of movement with their ends, but still, I think you can outrun that end. Sindelar has not had a good day on third down, and what you don't want here is a mistake. You got to have three points. You got to get at least three to get two touchdowns up going in the fourth quarter against the win. This will be the 12th play of this drive. Sindelar to the end zone, incomplete, intended for his tight end Herdman, but good coverage by the linebacker Covington, and that's a tough matchup for him. One Herdman on, is a yeah. good tight end. One on one man coverage. Covington was inside, almost got outran, but he at least made him throw it over his head. Watch the play action. Inside, good job from him. Make him throw the ball long. They have two kickers that they have used. Dellinger will come on. He's eight out of 11. And knocks it through from 26. Indiana now facing a two touchdown deficit. They will have the wind in the fourth quarter. Wap Fillier is deep. That pass just barely overthrown. Uh, I, you know, watching that game yesterday. I think that's a very bad loss by Miami. And they also struggled in some other games. And yeah. I, I, I don't think when you look at how close some of those other games were, how you can put them in there uh, just if they beat Clemson. Yeah, inopportune time to lose this, this time of the year. How about Alabama? They lose. What do you think? Do they still make it? Who knows? Certainly gives uh, food for thought when you're having a cold one later, doesn't it? Yeah, it'll be fun to talk about it after the game and going through the weekend till Tuesday. Third and 11. Lego desperately needs a first down. Purdue comes with a blitz. They don't get there, but Lego can't hit the pass intended for Simi Cobbs, who we saw struggling to get off the field a couple of series ago. Looks fine now, but Lego got drilled. Yeah, you got no backs and nobody blocking the backfield for you. You can't block them all. You can tell right up the middle. You know, Easy you get, shoot yeah, yeah, yeah. You just get too much pressure, and you got to throw the ball. It's like a three-step drop when you have nobody back there. It's goes when you go no backs. You got to get rid of the ball quick, and receivers weren't ready for their routes. Whitehead has been busy. This will be the ninth time he's trotted out there. Antwerp. One of the few times he's had the chance to return it, and he gets to the 47 yard line after a 38 yard punt. Last time that Purdue won the old Oaken bucket was back in 2012 when they rang up 56 points on Indiana. That game was the highest scoring contest in the 115 game series. 91 combined broke the previous record of 87 set when Purdue beat them 63 24 in 2004. They keep playing defense like this, making them punt the ball in the end of the win and play well in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to find something to put in that bucket because they're going to be <laughs> able to take it home with them. That is for sure. Indiana trying to go to yet another holding. But they got to do something with Martel Jones, and that's easier said than done because he's on a mission today. That's the end of the third quarter. Three quarters in the book. Markel Jones, 21 carries, 44 yards in this quarter. Welcome back to ESPN's Jiffy Lube Rivalry Series. 
These Purdue players have never had possession of the old Oaken bucket. They have never beaten Indiana to become bowl eligible. And it is ready to go. Indiana has possession, but right now that possession is in jeopardy. It is somewhere behind the policeman. What a day for Markel Jones. He powers forward again. Let's go to Carter. Mike, I'm about three feet from the bucket, being guarded by two Indiana State patrolmen, and I'm not going to get any closer, I can tell you that <laughs> much. But I visited the Indiana Hotel yesterday. It's a smaller bucket, but it weighs 40 pounds. That's a little bit too heavy for Coach Tuberville to hold. <laughs> well, Markel Jones keeps running like he's running. They're going to let him take it home. Yes, sir. Many more carries, he won't be able to pick it up. <laughs> Look at this guy go. Markel Jones, 10 5 out of bounds. What a game. That offensive line just starting to dominate Indiana's yeah, front. This is the same play, too, just outside zone to the left side of the offensive line. He really doesn't have to make people miss it. He has absolutely worn the Indiana front seven down. He has a career high 185 yards on 23 carries. I think I'd give him a break here in a minute. I don't think he wants one. Well, he's going to lose three of those yards there, Chris. Well, it's tough when you use lose your three time captain and your quarterback in a rivalry game that means the world. Sindelar with a throw that'll only get a couple of yards complete to Terry Wright. Crawford who has been very active in that secondary makes another stop. This is a must stop for Indiana here. They cannot get down three scores exactly going into the last 12 13 minutes he's looking for Anthrop and the uh, possibility of a fly sweep but he's not there single our look left goes back to the right touchdown a throw to Isaac Seco, his first touchdown catch of the year. This is all quarterback right here. He is supposed to go to the left side. There is nobody open. And he scrambles back to his right because he feels natural going that way. And Isaac Zico is wide open at first, but comes back to the ball and makes a good catch. Another. Another uh, throw to the corner. They've made a living off of at least attempting that today. And Purdue extends its lead to three touchdowns here in the first quarter. That's a great throw by Sindel. There is nothing like standing on the side of your opponent's face at the end of the day. Fillier on the return, trying to get to the outside, got a block. Wap Fillier to the 30. Back in West Lafayette, Indiana, we had mentioned Tommy had coached a lot of uh, rivalry games. We did not mention it started with the Mule Riders coach. And <laughs> Mule Riders at Southern Arkansas as a player. And then, of course, the Catholics versus convicts, Notre Dame and Miami. What a super rivalry that was and then the egg bowl iron bowl today i mean there's nothing like rivalries harmony grove hornets versus the hampton bulldogs when i was in high school hey, when you get to the iron bowl i think you have reached the pinnacle it means so much every single time they play and this year no different the old oak and bucket game purdue making a chance for its first bowl appearance since 2012 and Indiana had gone to three straight 
That's going to come to a screeching halt, barring a miracle. And the thing you don't realize, Mike, and most people, there's so many people who get a chance to go to the bowl game. All the administration, the band, the cheerleader, the the, the uh, dance line, all those people get an opportunity to enjoy, you know, a week or so at a bowl site. It's a lot of fun. And this is a back shoulder throw caught inside the 15 by Simi Cobbs. Always seems to have a big game, no matter who he's playing. Okanya is pretty good, pretty good position. He just gets back shoulder thrown again. A, a, really a, a, a ball that was meant to go deeper than that. He just underthrew it, and it's tough on a defensive back to cover that. Lego forced out of the pocket and then whacked by Marcus Bailey from behind his sixth sack of the year. Marcus Bailey coming from his weak side linebacker position from the weak side. They haven't done that much. They've, they've blitzed very little. Usually have given up a play with a blitz, but here they did a good job getting pressure. Lego trying to hustle him up. Throws the post, had it complete inside the five. Nice throw, nice catch by Timmy, and he knew he was going to take a shot, hung on anyway. I tell you, he's a young man that's caught a lot of balls this year, been very productive, and he doesn't drop many. That was a good route right there. He broke it off of a go route to a post route. Pretty easy throw catch. First and goal. Does Indiana have a miracle left? To the corner, that is a touchdown to Taysier Mack. Another pylon throw. We saw the same throw in the second quarter. And a good throw, good catch. Watch it. He, he's going like he's running a fade route and just breaks it to the pylon. And you just throw the ball to the pylon. That is the aiming point for the quarterback. He just got to show up to that position. Good throw, good catch. That is so hard to defend as a corner. Quite a drive for Lego. Hit five out of five for 67 yards and that touchdown to cut it to 14. Indiana has won the last four in this series, and that means no one on this roster has beaten them or gone to a bowl game. That is five minutes and 50 seconds away from changing. Now, Tommy, if you're coaching and they have seen the way you lined up for the first time, do you want to change it after they call a timeout? Or are you going to go with what you think is going to work? Well, you, you do the same thing, but Jeff Brown would just make sure everybody was in the right spot. Loose ball. Still loose. Indiana appears to have it, and they do. That was a great onside kick. Wasn't it? He kicked it with the opposite foot. Weren't expecting it. They didn't handle it very well at all, and they... The coverage was outstanding. As if there's any doubt, Chase Dutra comes out with the ball. This was a great job. He really faked him out. Excellent job of getting down the field and knocking the ball loose. Again, he's right footed, but he kicks it with his left foot. The front line's got to handle that ball. They didn't, didn't do a very good job of concentrating on it. Number 19, Tony Fields had the hit on the guy who was trying to hang on to the ball and shook it loose. So Indiana is still alive. And that was Jarek Burg Burgess, number 80, that mishandled it. You put all of your receivers up there. He's one of their better handed receivers, and he just mishandled the ball. Penalty on Purdue. They had two number 21s on their hands team. So Indiana is able to get uh, that much closer. This pass intended for Simi Cobbs. He was covered well by a Konye. No surprise, a blitz on the first down by Nick Holt. I guess trying to apply pressure, but all that did was just say, hey, I know you got one on one if you're blitzing, and that's what exactly what he did. He went to the outside receiver. Forced out of the pocket and they got him. You got to get rid of the ball. Don't take a sack. The clock keeps running. 
Easy Chuku got there late, but he got there. Now you've got to take a shot. Third and 15. You got to at least get 10 yards back. Blitz coming. Lego throws, got part of it to Simi Cobbs. That's six catches for the big junior wide receiver who may end up going in the NFL draft this year. This where you really push off of the outside receivers like a go route. Either you run the go route or you run the comeback for a first down. You could take a chance and go all the way, depending on the coverage. It's a must make down two scores. Underneath. And that's not good enough. Brookins made the grab, but he was covered immediately, and Indiana's hopes are going to die with that play. Just a bad decision out of Lego. You know, he, he he knows it down in distance, but he didn't wait for his outside and inside receivers to come open. He went ahead and dumped it off to his safety valve, the running back, and just went enough yards. Just didn't hold patience. Wasn't enough patience from the quarterback. And Easy Chuku makes another play. Dropped off in coverage that time. Another one-on-one -on -one tackle, Mike. They've done it all day. Yes, they have. So only 437 left, and now Purdue can just go to work on the clock. Indiana with two timeouts at its disposal. Thank you. One timeout left for Indiana. And Purdue is going to make them use it as Markel Jones got back to the line of scrimmage. 30 second timeout in Indiana. And there's the Their final, and final timeout. timeout. First down here would just about do it. Pretty close. They would need seven. And you got to imagine Markel Jones will get the ball. He does. Dives forward across midfield, but about a yard and a half shy. So they'll let as much of the clock work down as they can and then kick it away. You're not going to get any return punting into the wind, so you're going to get probably a 10 man rush trying to block the punt. There's no reason to set up a return. It'll be a fair caught ball anyway. Markel Jones needs to mark this on his calendar. 31 carries, 217 yards. Shopper will punt it away. Timmy in his deep. And here comes the rush. They don't get there. Good job to just get the ball out. That was the punter's job. Just kick it. And they will let it die at the 12 with 3.30 left. Indiana had gone to three straight bowl games, 86 to 88. A uh, win today would let them go to third consecutive bowl games for only the second time in school history. But out of timeouts, only 3.30 left and down two touchdowns. We've seen stranger things, but not many. You're going to see two and three man rushes from uh, Purdue. You're going to see a lot of deep safeties. Don't let the receivers off the line without getting hit and keep them out of the middle of the field. They go under pressure. They got him at the one. They'll tackle him in the end zone, but he was in the field of play when they initially hit him. It didn't look like there was an offensive line there. Watch this no. pressure. They do a twist in the middle, and they do not pick it up. Galen Robinson and Eddie Wilson absolutely destroyed the guards on both sides. He had nowhere to throw the ball. Tough for Lego. He's trying to hold on to the ball, let somebody get open. Now he has to dump it underneath and got it to Brookins. Brookins fighting for everything he can get out to the 12. They'll give him all the short ones they want to throw. Lego, what a strike that time. Got it to Timian on another crossing route. 
And Lego has made some terrific throws to Oh, he did. He stepped. That was one of the few times on this drive he's had a chance to step up in the pocket. Indiana refuses to go quietly. Taysier Mack breaks a couple of tackles. They've still got time. They get the ball in the end zone, another onside kick. Lego unloads for the end zone for Cobbs. Covered well by Aconye, but that is a physical mismatch as Cobbs is 6'4, 220. They've got no choice other than throw the ball in the end zone now or close to the end zone. Four or five yards doesn't make any difference. Again, no timeouts left. That Purdue defense finally looking a little tired up front. They're not getting anywhere close to Lego right now. Yeah, they need to go to a three-man rush and drop eight. They're absolutely gassed. They had a guy open in the middle of the field there. He just didn't see him. Perfect strike by Lego. Got it to Taysier Mack, who's had a big ball game. Only had 16 catches coming into this contest. He has been a very active wide receiver. Seven catches, 132 yards. They go underneath, diving for the end zone, touchdown! How about this? That was an awesome throw and catch to the outside. Watt Fillier, tremendous effort to stay in bounds and dive for the goal line and get to the pylon. Just a perfect throw and great extension right here. All you have to do is get the ball to the pylon. He knows it. Hit the pylon, it's a touchdown. That's terrific. And all at once, what looked like an impossible hill to climb is now only seven points. Indiana doesn't want to give up the little, the, uh, the old oak and bucket. They're kind of proud of it. They've had it, what, four years? That's right. We don't want to send it back. We want to keep it. And again, a bowl game at stake. The onside kick worked the last time. They usually signal from the sideline of where to kick it. You can see all the players on the kicking team are looking to the coach to where to kick it, to the right or to the left. Griffin Oaks did a great job last time. Does the same thing again. Bounces it up in the air. And Purdue covers it. And it was a great kick. Had a great bounce on it. Just a clean catch that time. Very clean catch. That's what they should have had the other time. But it doesn't take but one. Oaks did the best he could. And Easy Chuku was the guy who came up with the ball. You don't expect a defensive end linebacker to be in on the hands team. Yeah, you want that bounce. And Font almost got his hand on that ball. Very close. That's how that's how close this game has been. Very close. Game of inches. But now Indiana can't stop the clock. When you're on the winning side, Mike, that's the best formation in the world, especially yes, when you know you're getting ready to have a couple of weeks. Go to a bowl game, first time in four years. What a job by Jeff Brom and his staff to get this team to a bowl game their first year at Purdue. And those players have earned it, particularly on defense. They have played so hard this year and gotten so much better. And Purdue will go to six and six. And they're going after the bucket. <laughs> Ball eligible Indiana season is going to end at five and seven and there go the Boilermakers to the sideline. They're going to get that bucket. These rivalry games and the prizes may seem silly to people outside the programs or outside the conference but it means something to these guys that's for sure. 
What a fan. What a fan. Look at the fans. It's been a long time. That's awesome. Exciting ball game. Purdue wins it in the end, 31-24. For Tommy Tuberville and Paul Carcaterra, this is Mike Patrick. Good afternoon from West Lafayette. Now we send you to Iowa State, Kansas State.